This is the FX-551 series fiber optic amplifier from Panasonic. In this video, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the various menu settings, functions, and teaching capability. I'll have these uh, set up in various chapters so you can select uh, the, the parts of the video that you want to you want to see. First thing you'll notice about this fiber optic amplifier is it's a dual digital display. This in green is the threshold level. In red is the incident light level or the amount of light that gets reflected back into the amplifier. Over here is the output indicator. So when the output is activated, you'll see this little orange light locking lever. Underneath this cover, it just flips up. We can go into some of the menu settings. Uh, you just hit this button once, and it's got a really nice, quick, easy way to set up whether you want uh, light on or dark on for your logic. So to change it to dark on, you're going to press this plus arrow over here. I don't say dark on. To teach it, you hit the set button right there, and now it's stored in EEPROM. You want to go back to light on, which we will do. Just go back here, press that button, and you're good to go. The next setting, the CUST, and you'll see these red lines right here. This allows you to adjust the sensitivity to receive light and you can adjust this with the plus and minus arrow keys here. So where would you use this? Well, where you would, a couple places where you would use this would be uh, if you're in a situation where you have too much light returning to the sensor, you can use this to have the sensor be a little more sensitive uh, and be able to not be uh, oversaturated. Oftentimes, or the biggest times that we use this is in applications where we have in the, a fiber optic array sensor in a through beam situation, and we're trying to detect small parts. The, and this would allow you, and this would allow you to adjust this to have it be more sensitive to allow you to detect smaller objects, that sort of thing. We're going to go ahead and put it up to the max level. I'll go ahead and teach that in. And then you press this button again and you go into the various pro modes. Now, if you're familiar with Panasonic fiber optic amplifiers, uh, that's been their uh, main go-to for getting into the deeper settings in the fiber optics uh, for quite a while. Uh, this FX-551 series, they've kind of uh, put together the most important or the most common uh, uh, functions and have narrowed this down a little bit, making it quite a bit more user friendly. So to look at that, we're gonna go into the pro mode. You're gonna hit this set key and it'll say pro one, pro two, or pro three. So we're gonna start with pro one. We're gonna hit the set key again. And the first one is speed or response time setting. The response time, uh, the response time setting does a number of things. It can affect uh, obviously your response time which the response times are for standard is 250 microseconds. The long is two milliseconds. The ultra long is four milliseconds. And the hyper mode is 24 milliseconds. Then there's one more, there's a fast mode, which will allow you to get down to 60 microseconds. In addition to increasing or decreasing response time, it also increases or decreases uh, sensing distance or max sensing distance. And that's why they use that terminology hyper or ultra long uh, in order to boost the gain of the sensor and get a longer sensing distance. We're gonna go ahead and leave it in standard mode, teach that in, and we'll look at the next one. The next one is delay. So this is the timer functionality. And with the timer, you can either have no timer, of course, or you can have an off delay timer, an on delay timer, or a one shot timer. 
And if I wanted to set up an off delay timer, an off delay timer is a pulse stretcher. So you could have that say that if a signal comes by but you want to have the output stay on for a little bit longer in order to, uh, in order to have the PLC <coughs> uh, detect it because it's, so, it's moving so quickly or passes by so quickly, you could set up an off delay. So we're going to press the sub button here. The next thing it's going to do is you're, uh, you're setting up the timer range. And there's a couple of different ones here, actually three different ones. You can have it set for seconds, or you can have it set for a tenth of a millisecond, or you can have it set for milliseconds. And those are the increments that you can select. So if you set it for, say, seconds, now you can set a time delay of one second, two second, three second, so on and so forth. If I want to make this be in milliseconds, I can do that. Or I can even set this to uh, tenths of milliseconds. And essentially what you're doing there is you're setting it up for microseconds or however many microseconds you want the sensor to be turned on. The overall range of this timer range is 100 microseconds to 32 seconds. Okay, so we're going to go back here and just turn the timer off to make it easy. Okay. The next setting is the shift mode. And the shift mode sets the percentage for limit teaching. So one of the teach modes in this sensor is a limit teaching mode where you just uh, you just teach it a specific condition and it'll automatically adjust the threshold value by whatever percentage you select. So the default is like 15%. You can also do, you can also make the adjustment uh, with a actual integer number. So let's see here. This is set for percentage. And you can see it's at 15%. We could make it 20% or whatever. Um, we'll go back here though and we'll change it to digit and here you're saying I want whatever the display reads when I teach it I want to set the threshold value 100 move it 100 places or you know 150 or even up to like 999 or whatever you want to set it for so and this is all dependent upon your uh, response time mode that you've set. So we'll talk about that here in a few, few minutes. Okay, so let's move out of here. And the next one is back to response time. So we're gonna go to uh, Pro 2. This is the teach lock mode. So what you do here is you can set it for allowing teaching mode while it's locked and nothing else, or just completely lock down the teaching mode. Display setting, uh, you can set it to display in digits, percentage, or peak bottom hold. And then you can have the peak, uh, you can have the bottom hole change after every refresh or display or hold indefinitely. So we can go in here and select that. And you, like I said, if you have it for off, then it's uh, changing at every uh, refresh or have it constantly uh, hold the last, um, the, the lowest value that it's ever seen. We don't want that, so we're going to go out here, and then the other one on here is turn, and that does what you would think it would do. It just flips the display around onto the other side, and of course that's going to make it really difficult to read, so let's, uh, let's turn that back. 
turn that back off, flip, the, flip it back around, and I'll go on to the next one. There's an echo mode for turning the display completely off if you want to, and you can also set it so that it'll have various, uh, various timeouts. So off is, uh, the display is always on, and then it on is while in run mode with no key press <clears throat> uh, for a certain period of time. It'll turn off. And then full is no key press within 20 seconds or a lock mode is initiated. Okay, let's move on to Pro 3. Within Pro 3, there are several different functions you can set. The first one is display adjustment. Display adjustment gives you the ability to set sensors at an incident light level of zero. So for instance, if you have several amplifiers and the incident light levels with no target read 20 or 50 or 75 consistently, then you could set this so that all those amplifiers would read zero. And that's kind of a nice feature for being able to walk by, have an operator see it at a glance and determine that Oh yes, all these sensors are at zero, everything's working fine, there's no parts uh, passing by the sensor. And uh, it'll have each one consistently read the same value. The next one is a reset, and this will allow you to do a factory reset. So you can press this button, and if you hit set again, it'll do a factory reset. Want to do this factory reset, you can hit this cancel button and go back out. And that's one thing to kind of remember here is that uh, if you get into a setting and you don't want to make an adjustment to it, just press this cancel button and it'll take you back to the previous setting. The next mode uh, has to do with uh, emission frequency setting. And there are several different ones that you can set in here. So in an emission frequency setting, the IP1, uh, what that means is that it is that uh, you have the emission frequency or crosstalk prevention function turned off. If you have multiple sensors stacked together and they're all looking in an area where you could potentially get some crosstalk, you can set this for IPF. And that'll allow you to have crosstalk immunity amongst four sensors. The next one's kind of an interesting feature is uh, used to minimize the effects of ambient lighting. So, for instance, you might have an application where you have a couple of sensors looking up at high frequency lighting or some other bright light. Uh, you can set this for this IPR and uh, that will help minimize the effects of, of uh, ambient light might have on that incident light level. Go ahead and turn it off since we're only using one amplifier right now. The next one, it says ALT on the display, but it's really uh, an algorithm. And it allows for automatic threshold adjustment based on time and incident light level while the output is either set on or off, you choose. Uh, this could be good for through beam application in a dusty environment and the threshold level could be adjusted downward as uh, debris builds up on the lens and then that threshold level will just automatically uh, adjust and compensate for uh, the, the lens uh, building up with dust and contaminants. Okay, so before we go back to the run mode, let's go ahead and do a factory reset uh, in case we messed something up here. So we're going to go back and say yes and you'll see the dashed lines and the sensors factory reset. So what I have here is a fiber optic cable. It's the FD42G. I've got that connected to an FX MR2 focusing lens. That focusing lens will allow the beam to uh, go down to a fine spot. The size of that spot can be adjusted by how far that lens is threaded on. I've got the output of the sensor uh, going into this little LED light right here um, for a target. For a target, I have my external standby here. This is a stair step piece. Uh, you can see it's got our old uh, Ramco logo on there. Okay, so let's let's teach the sensor. 
Um, and we'll start off with a two-point teach. So we're going to put the part on the first step, and we're going to press and release the set button. That's going to give you the first teach point. Now I'm going to go over here and press and release the teach button. And look what it says. It says hard. And what you'll notice is that the difference between the first step and the second step didn't change. And the reason for that is that the sensor is uh, oversaturated at that, uh, at that distance. It's maxed out. So what we, what we can do is we can press this uh, mode button and go into the CUST setting like we talked about earlier. And we can adjust the, the uh, sensitivity level or the light sensitivity level. And we'll just go down one. We could go down two maybe, but looks like uh, it looks like going down one will actually get us out of that uh, incident light level the issue that we were having. So I'm going to go ahead and teach that put the setting in place. Now we'll go back and uh, set the sensor up. So move it back over to the first step. Press and release the set button. Move it over to the second condition. And this time we see good and we actually see the output light turn on. And when we're on the first step, no output. And we're on second step, we see an output. So that's all there is to the two-point teach. It's very nice, simple, and easy to, uh, easy to set up. The other teach condition is automatic teaching mode. And what that means is you're setting the sensor up so that uh, it'll automatically adjust the threshold level on a moving target. So it could be a situation where you can't jog the parts uh, from one condition to another. You just have to let it, the machine run. So what you're going to do is you're going to press and release this teach button. Then you're going to press and hold this button, and it's going to say auto. When you let go of the button, it's going to say good, hopefully, if you taught it properly. And here we go. we got the output on with the second step and off with the first step. So that's the auto teach mode. The next mode is the, uh, uh, the next teaching mode is the limit teaching mode. And it's going to adjust the threshold value 15% because that was the default, uh, the default setting. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the set button. Now we're going to set the adjust the threshold level in a positive direction or in a negative direction. So let's try positive direction. And you're going to see that the threshold value automatically shifted up 15%. And the output is on on the second step and off with the first step. So those are the three different uh, teach functions. For more information on the FX551 series, please visit our website at panasoniksensors.com. You can search for the FX-551 series. You'll see that in this particular series that we offer an NPN output type, a PNP output type, so discrete outputs. Uh, there are versions with a quick disconnect cable, very similar to the old FX301 series that a lot of people are familiar with. In fact, it takes the same cable, so it allows for very easy uh, change out. And the other option is a new IOLink version which is also available, and it has an M12 uh, quick disconnect on it. So a lot of nice, uh, uh, well-rounded product lineup of the FX551 series. And like I said, if you have any questions or want more information, visit our website at ramkawai.com or panasoniksensors.com or give us a call at 800-280-6933. Thanks for watching.